Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily broadcast. This is episode 753 and the topic today is about self-love and self-support, particularly why they're so important to you as well as to me um, and not just not just for relationship. I'll explain here's why as I get into that. So before I jump into the topic and explain all the ins and outs and why it's worked so well, let me introduce myself and explain why I do these talks. Uh, my name is Barry Selby, as you may have already guessed by the title on the broadcast. <laughs> um, I am the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, because I'm a relationship a attraction expert. I'm also, a bit, I'm also a inspirational speaker and a passionate champion for the divine feminine as I help women. Hello, Della, nice to see you. Um, as I help women find balance in love, life, and business. And that's also what inspired these talks I've done for the last two plus years, which is Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring a Feminine Heart. And today we're episode number 753, and I'm coming back to this talk again, or this idea of self-love and self-support, because it's, in, it's important. <laughs> if you haven't got this point before, this will help you. So I'm going to talk about why self-love and self-support are so vital, and not just for relationships, because a lot of times you think, and I've talked about it, so I may have given that away, that if you love yourself first, it's healthy to have a healthy relationship because you're not looking for the other person to be the source of your love. Actually, I'm going to break that down a bit more clearly so you get that one. But I want to take it beyond the relationship scope because for those of you watching who are single, it's vital. And if you're already in a relationship, to really focus on this is vital too for your relationship and beyond. So there's a little bit to unpack here. So let's dive in. Um, and by the, way, if, by the way, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, this is a daily Facebook Live I do it every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. I'll give you the links where to find the replays and everything else at the end of the broadcast, so stay tuned for that. And I might throw in a link or two as well, and because there's never scripted. So, self-love, self-support. Self-love to me is, in a way, the source of what this is all about. Because self-support is almost the action you take when you do love yourself. So you love yourself first, then you do self-supportive actions to support that. Self-supportive actions to support, you know, get double support. It makes sense, I have trust. So, self-love as, as a choice is a place from which you put yourself in a kind space within your awareness. This is a simple, simple way of putting it. I've got different ways of saying it, but I'll see what I can do. So when you love yourself and care about yourself, first of all, as I said earlier, if you're in a relationship or you're heading into a relationship, you won't be spending your time looking towards the other person as your only source of love. You actually start loving yourself first, which actually is a nice thing for your partner because when you do love yourself first, you're actually more um, able to contribute love to the relationship, so to speak, and they won't need to sort of keep feeding you love to make you feel okay. As I talked about this last week, this would be um, the path of codependence, which I'm very adamant about removing from this um, culture, slowly but surely. Hi Sarah, I see you in my broadcast as well. Um, so self-love is key. Now, but I want to take it beyond relationships because a lot of people who are not in a relationship will go, well, what do I care? I'm not in a relationship. Well, you may not say that. But self-love is, as I said, is kind of the focal point of where you come from, the light that shines from within if you want to get metaphysical. But self-support is what you do when you are loving yourself because when you love yourself, then you take better care of yourself, which is what self-support's about. But it also extends to other areas of life, and I'm gonna drop some seeds in here along the way to give you some, um, and put this most effectively, incentive <laughs> to love yourself. So again, so self-love basically is the action of being caring about yourself, which includes things like being kind to yourself, um, caring for yourself when other people aren't, for example, um, being compassionate if you make a mistake, being willing to not judge yourself, or if you do judge yourself, to forgive yourself. All these things are part of what self-love really is. Additionally to that, the self-support piece means that you take actions that support you being happy, whole, healthy, etc. So you'll do things like approve of yourself, you'll trust yourself more, you do things like that. These are pieces, by the way, of a course that I'm creating, which I'll talk about later on. But what happens is it extends beyond the relationship arena because, for example, when you care about yourself and you love yourself, you're more willing to ask somebody for something you need. Whereas if you don't, you might hold back. Say, for example, asking for a raise at work. This one's for the ladies. A friend of mine told me this recently and just hit me this way. She said, it's like when you love yourself more, you'd be more willing to ask for a raise at work. 
which if you weren't necessarily loving yourself and appreciating yourself and caring for yourself, you might be either one, very scared to ask for, or two, not even willing to ask for that in the first place. So self-love has a financial implication in this context. It also means that when you love yourself and care about yourself, you might make better choices with your diet. Maybe you don't go out to eat all the time. Maybe you eat at home because you want to cook for yourself and really know what you're buying, what you're cooking. Maybe you'll focus more on organic ingredients or you'll go on to a more vegetable heavy diet. It's all your choice. I'm not saying what the dietary right and wrongs are. That's not my area of skill. I do know some stuff, but I'm not going to tell you about that. That's not to you to decide. But by having self-love, self-care, self-supportive practices, you will choose generally to take better care of yourself. You might choose to go out exercising and walking more often rather than sitting at a desk all day. Maybe you'll choose to um, do things that are, well you, well, you will. You'll choose things to be more supportive of who you are. So self-love, self-support are fundamental um, cornerstones or, or stepping stones of your self-support practices. I keep saying that, self-support, self-support. They will help you create practices in your life that will make your life more um, healthy, whole, successful, enjoyable, prosperous, and fulfilling. That's a good list to start with. So how does that play out, you may be wondering. Well, as I mentioned before, one could be that if you're at work, maybe you, choose, maybe you know it's time for it to get a raise, or maybe you want to get paid before you do. And if you really love yourself and care about yourself, you will do that more easily than if you don't. When you don't love yourself and don't care about yourself, you might be putting up with a lot of stuff I was going to say something else, but you stuff as a polite word. Maybe you're putting up a lot of stuff that you don't really want, but because you don't care about yourself, you don't choose to raise your standards. You might also choose, because you care about yourself, to actually... Sorry, something in my eye again. Happy yesterday, got something in my eye, that's weird. Okay, you might choose, because you do care about yourself and love yourself, to leave a job that doesn't work for you, because the environment was claustrophobic, or was not the way you wanted it to be. Maybe your boss wasn't the person who you wanted to work for. Or maybe you just were doing work you don't want to do. And you've chosen to take a leap into something much more fulfilling. That self-love, self-supportive, centered practice will create a different lens through which you view life around you. And this is one of those things that can be challenging for some people to, to actually build up that self-love, self-supportive practice to become more self-responsive um, to the world as in being centered in yourself, yes, self-centered, I know, but I don't mean it that way, but centered in yourself so you can be more self-respect, um, self-respecting, yeah, self-respecting, just make sure we're saying the right thing here. So when you go out in the world, you will say yes to certain things and no to other things that are more aligned to where you are. It also means for those of you in the relationship arena, if you have a lot more self-love and self-support, because you now start to respect yourself more and you start approving of yourself and having more confidence, your dating choices will improve. Yes, your dating choice will improve because you'll raise your standards. You may look back at your past relationships and see places where maybe you didn't choose as well as you wanted to. I would tie that back into perhaps your own self-support, your own lack of self-support at the time, and self-love. So that your desire to be loved and respected was not as um, important, simply put. So when you do appreciate and love who you are, your choices out in the relationship arena will also change. In fact, and this is what I talk about in my work too, when you do love and support who you are and you honor yourself enough, you may choose to be single more often because you're not so needing of love from outside. That's a big one, by the way, for a lot of people. There are many people I know, and you may be one of them, who if you're single, you may be dating lots and lots of times and being single less of the time because you feel that being alone is lonely. And that's the talk I did last week as well. I'm going to say I'm tying some things together from last week, but okay, let's bring it present. When you if I put your energy into self-love, self-support, self-confidence, all these different things I'm talking about, these different self-suffixes, um, <laughs> suffices, then you'll make choices that are better for you. It's tempting sometimes to think, oh, I'll just do what this, this is or do that thing, and find yourself in a place where you're going to regret things later. One of the things I've done recently a lot in my time is I take myself out of situations I don't feel respected in. As in, I've been in environments and places where people who were I was talking to were so busy talking at me and not with me, I just felt I felt um, like I'd been like a bucket of water had been chucked on me. 
I just said, you know what, I need to walk away. And I would just excuse myself and leave. Because for me, that was a self-supportive, self-loving action. So what I'm saying here is, as a practical thing, when you are raising the vibration of your own self-support, self-love, self-confidence, self-trust, all these different things, you'll make better self, you'll make better choices for yourself, you can put it that way around. And you'll choose to, be, you'll choose to leave environments that don't work for you, be it a work environment, a relationship, um, a location, because you realize you're worth taking care of. It's amazing what we as human beings do, what we will put up with when we don't really care about ourselves, we don't really love ourselves. It's really actually kind of sad to watch that we choose less things. Now, yes, there's going to be environments where maybe you don't have the ability to get out of a certain situation, but you'll change how you treat yourself in that situation. You'll be looking for ways to improve things. You'll be looking for ways to take care of yourself in better ways, even if you can't change the actual circumstance to a degree. Maybe you're in a marriage that you don't feel like you want to leave because of the kids or something like that, but you can choose to be more respectful about who you are so you raise the standard of how you're treated in that relationship. Even if, you, even if for some reason you, re, well, even for the reason because of the kids, you choose not to leave. I'm, I'm being careful with that because that's a much bigger topic. But what I'm saying is, generally speaking, you'll raise the environment, you'll raise the quality of the environment you're in, or you'll raise the environment itself to a better. Sorry, let me say it another way. You'll raise the environment of the quality. You'll raise the quality of the environment you're in, or you'll change the environment for a better quality one. That's what I'm trying to say. And that is one of the benefits and one of the reasons why self-love and self-support are so key, they're so needed. Now, the reason why I talk about this a lot is because when I'm coaching my clients and when I talk about this in other places, it keeps coming up as a primary focus. Self-love is such a key element and it sounds like a soft one, I know. And people are like, don't worry about that, just go love somebody else. Personally, I'm passionate about this, having been single for quite a long time, as those people who know me know, because a lot of it was working on my own self-reflective um, practices. And I've been playing with titling and stuff, and I've, I've, I've got a course called Coming Home to Yourself, and I'll put a link in the comments so you can check it out. You can't sign up for it right now, so there. <laughs> but you can check it out and have a look, and I'll put a link in the comments for that. But I'm starting to feel like it's more really about self-mastery. Because when we learn how to take care of ourselves, we start to have mastery over our environment, master over our own lives, and master over our own attitudes. Let me give you some thoughts. If you're, if you're discovering your daily life, you get angry more, upset more, bent out of shape more than you'd rather, more than you'd like. Maybe you feel more put upon, maybe you feel more, um, what's the word I would use? Fed up, even. These are clues and indicators that you're not in a place of self-love, self-support. As simple as that. You might feel frustration at a situation because you know you can be in a better place. That's because part of you is driving towards that self-support and self-love, which is great. But if you're not even aware of that, if you're just feeling like oh, frustrated, upset, angry, repressed, all these different things, which I have used as my own um, leverage points, just so you know, that's an indication where you're not really connected to your own self-love. When you start filling up your own self-love and your own um, self-support, I keep calling them tanks, like you're filling up a petrol tank gasoline tank for the Americans. If, you, if you're filling up those places first, then you just simply make better choices. You might get angry if someone's trying to hold you back. However, you'll come from a place of that's much cleaner. It won't be a place of like um, petulance. You'll be like, oh, this isn't gonna work, I need to change. So again, you might write a mask for a raise at work, you might choose to change jobs. You might change the environment you live in, you might change the relationship you're in. You might choose to be single because that's a place that's healthier for you to be than be in a relationship. Your life, if you do this, and you haven't done this before, will transform. Your way of being to, with you and yourself, your relationship with other people, not just romantic relationships, but all other relationships, will change. Here's one of the things, by the way. I mentioned before about self-love being a um, resource place to come from. Because when you're looking out there for love all the time, it's actually putting yourself on the needs of other people. When you start loving yourself, you cut all those imaginary cords, those imaginary channels for other people so that they don't have any access to you to control you anymore. This is a game changer for some people, by the way. You may put you in a place, yourself in a place where you felt controlled by others, family, coworkers, boyfriend, girlfriend, partners, spouses, all these different things, because you've given them the right to control the love you feel. Not intentionally, just because you didn't know you could love yourself enough. 
But when you start to learn to love yourself, to fill up your own resources, become fulfilled yourself from inside out, that need is gone. So if they're using that as leverage, it has no impact anymore. This can change your love life and every relationship in your life completely if this is something you're dealing with. And it's nothing about them. It's the fact that you no longer need that energy. So you're basically, you're, you're yearning to have them bring to you that codependence I talked about is no longer there because you feel from inside out. And if you're in a relationship where you want to raise the quality of relationship, this is a key. As I said before, when you love yourself fully from inside and then share to your partner, then you're contributing from the overflow of the love you already have. You're not coming from a place of lack and you're not pulling from a place of lack either. And your partner will love you more for it, which is kind of nice. But of course, the thing about that is then, <laughs> on the other side, is when you love yourself fully first, you might start, start drawing people to you who want to feed on your love. And I've been there myself, it's not fun. That's when you want to start getting really clear about discerning who you hang out with. Removing yourself, as, as I said, removing yourself from situations that drain on you, that pull on you, because maybe they see the light and love inside of you and want some of that themselves, is a vital thing to do is say, you know what, cut that off. And you may have to be blunt a couple of times, you may have to be direct a couple of times, say to people, um, I appreciate what you want, but I need to take care of myself. And focus on the self-care, not against them, self-care for yourself, to remove yourself. But it's worth doing because again, the more you fill up yourself, the more whole you will become, the more, more fulfilled you become in who you are, and the more effective you'll be in the world. I know it sounds a bit, maybe a bit, so for some of you might sound a bit weird to say it this way, but this is kind of a game changer for some people, and this may be what you've been waiting to hear. And if it is, I'm so glad. Um, this is part of my passion to teach this, but also to give you the tools to do something with it. So I mentioned earlier that I've got a course called Coming Home to Yourself that is in parentheses self-mastery now. That's what I'm calling it in a way. It's gonna, it may become official, we'll see. I've created this course as a beta test right now. That's why you can't sign up for it. Um, if you want to check it out, I'm going to put the link in the comments. Basically, it's my website, barryselby.com forward slash coming home. So, well, thank you. Marzena, Ma is that your name? I think I'm glad you liked it. Um, that, you can go check it out. There's a link in there to reach out to me to talk about it, but you can't, you can't sign up for it there. So, just so you know, just a little description. Also, if you want to get more help because you find yourself stuck, I'll put a link in the comments for a um, discovery session with me, the com com a complimentary clarity conversation, the triple C. That'll be in the comments too. And finally, whoops, again, okay, sorry, my battery's getting low. I need to finish it up quickly. Um, also, I'll put a link in the comments for my self-love practice because I'm talking about self-love a lot. And the self-love course is a guided meditation. Actually, it's two audio guided meditations with a workbook that'll help you get more practice in loving yourself and building up that muscle, so to speak, that self-love practice, and it'll change your life in dramatic ways. So those three links will be in the comments. And I did mention at the beginning, it's in my Facebook Live, so let me let you know where you can find these if you haven't seen me before. This is my daily chat, <laughs> brought to you by Facebook. No, I, <laughs> I do a Facebook Live every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, unless I have to change the schedules, but pretty much every day, um, seven days a week. Um, so you can find me on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. My replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, which I invite you to like that page because that liking thing helps to help apparently on numbers. And thirdly, I have a replay place on YouTube. So I make sure just for safekeeping, I can have a backup on YouTube, which is, um, my username is Barry Selby, of course. All my social media is my name. So subscribe to my, my channel there. And there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. And then there's all the replays. It's actually, I think it's easier to find, if you're looking for certain subject matter titles, you can peruse that much more easily on YouTube than you can on Facebook. It seems to be easier to peruse because one, it loads quicker. <laughs> And two, you can do like do a browser search to find the words you're looking for. If you're looking for self-love or um, codependence or um, romance, whatever you're looking for, you find them there as well. So with that, I thank you for watching. Again, this is my daily Facebook Live. I'll be again here again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. If you have any questions or thoughts or concerns you want to ask here, you can do so or message me, message me on social media or check out the three links. Those will be on the, book, the comments as soon as I sign off. Um, that's it. That'll give you something to play with. Hope this will give you some ideas to think about. I appreciate you being with me as always. And uh, I will see you again tomorrow. Same time, same channel. Take care. Bye.